The losses added up in the home opener last Sunday versus the Raiders. Coach Tomlin joins Bob Pompiani to discuss T.J. Watt's early departure against Las Vegas. Bob gets a scouting report of Joe Burrow and the Bengals as we turn the page to week three. Plus, I learned the secret to King Mel's spin move in my one-on-one -on -one with Melvin Ingram. That's all ahead on the 84 Lumber Mike Tomlin Show. Here we go. This pass is caught. That's the way to work. Come on. He's hit that sack. The Steelers win the football game. Let's go. Come get it. You know what it is. This one is going to be a historic game. Let's get it. 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 Let's get everyone and welcome to the 84 Lumber Mike Tomlin Show. I'm Missy Matthews. TJ Watt only played 16 snaps this past Sunday before leaving the game with a groin injury and the Steelers had to place Tyson Alualu on IR. The loss of the two former first round draft picks made it much more difficult to make life miserable for Derek Carr. Bob Pompiani is with Coach Tomlin to break down the Steelers home opener against the Raiders. Bob. All right, Missy, thanks very much. Uh, Coach Tomlin joins us here. And, Coach, I know you put out a tweet last week right before everybody showed up saying, welcome back, Steeler Nation. I imagine it was good to get those fans in there. Made a difference, certainly, with the atmosphere compared to last year. Unfortunately, you can give them what they wanted at the end of the day. Man, it's always great to be in Heinz Field, particularly in front of our fans. You know, the result of the game wasn't what we wanted, man, but what a beautiful day. And I'm just so appreciative of support. You know, sometimes, you know, know what you're missing until it's missing. I think all of us are really excited to be back in front of fans, even when we're traveling. You always talk about the global picture, so I want to ask you, uh, globally, looking back at that game, what are your biggest takeaways you know, that led to the loss against the Raiders? You know, just as attrition set in on defense, we lost some of the flexibility with some of the things that we like to do, um, and particularly as it related to the plan. Um, you know, with Devin Bush and Joe Hayden getting hurt in practice late in the week as they did a week ago, um, we had already made some commitments to some things. And so, um, but that's the challenges of this game and this business at this level. Um, pro teams are different than college teams. There's 50 guys, you know, as opposed to 100. And so uh, there's some challenges associated with those things. Um, feel really good about it this week, man. You know, regardless of player availability or not, we've, we have, you know, seven days to plan and to duly prepare those we anticipate playing. And so I feel really good about it. Yeah, how difficult is that when you get injuries either late in the week or in game, whereas like the Raiders had some after the game, so they had sort of a week to anticipate what they may have to deal with. How much more difficult is it to get it the way you got it? You know, the, the, the significant in-game ones um, that really can change the structure of your planning um, when you, particularly two in one area, like we lost Tyson Alualu and TJ Watt in the first half. And so that's two of the four men that comprise our four man rush. And so your four man rush has a chance to look a little differently uh, without those guys. And so, you know, those adjustments um, that, that, that cause you to look at things maybe different philosophically are the challenging ones. Not, not as a coach, but just in terms of relaying it to the players and relaying it to the point where they are comfortable executing it. And in some cases with not a lot of practice. All right, let's talk about the offense because uh, once again, coming off the Buffalo win in the second half, uh, made some big plays at big times. In this game, not so much. And I'm just curious about with a young offensive line. Uh, do you need to just go back and run the ball even more until they get their footing a little bit? Or how do you, you know, develop those guys seemingly all on the fly? You know, it, it's just that. It's the word that you mentioned. It's development. And, and development doesn't happen overnight. Uh, in the midst of it, though, we got to play winning football and, and position them to play winning football. And so that's what we're doing. We realize with each passing day, uh, they individually and collectively are going to be better. And um, there's going to be some challenges along the way. Uh, we embrace that. There's going to be some learning along the way. We embrace that. Um, the challenge and the things that we do embrace is in the midst of that, we got to do things well enough to win. Uh, we got to minimize some negativity in, this, in some instances sometimes. Uh, but that's the chess match that is coaching, and that's something that, that we all enjoy. Um, those young men are working their tails off and, and contributing in a positive way to our efforts, and, and, and I fully expect that to continue. Najee Harris showed you some glimpses of what I'm sure you saw 
in Alabama and why you took him in the first round. Uh, might we expect more of him both in the run game and the pass game moving forward? Very much so. He's, he's an example of a young guy that, you know, I'm kind of talking about. I thought he was much more comfortable um, last weekend and in week one, and it's reasonable to expect that just to continue. And, and as they gain comfort, and, and by comfort I mean um, just understanding and being in the environment and, and, and knowing that your preparation has set you up for performance. Um, and, and, and I think the more you do it, the more comfortable you get with that understanding. And so I just think that the more he plays, the more he's going to get comfortable with his preparation, setting him up for performance. And that's what allows the talent to come out, the innate things, the things that you can't coach. One other thing I want to ask you about, because it's a luxury to have with uh, Chris Boswell, you needed two possessions. You decided to kick a 56-yard field goal. Is What's his range? What's his limit? Or, you know, a lot of people would scratch their head and said, hey, just go for the, the seven points ahead of the three points, but you decided 56 well within his range. I'm really comfortable with Boz uh, up to probably ridiculous distances, you know. Um, <laughs> it just I love challenging him in that way. He loves being challenged in that way in practice settings and so forth. I don't think any of us are surprised when he delivers for us in those circumstances. Coming up, it's a visit from Cincinnati. First AFC North matchup. The kitchen will get hotter, as Mike likes to say. We'll talk about the Bengals off to a one-on-one -on -one start, as is everyone in this division when we return. Right now, back to Missy Matthews. All right, thanks so much, Bob. We all know Steelers Nation will be ready to go tomorrow afternoon at Heinz Field at 1 o'clock. Coming up later in our show, Melvin Ingram gives me a few pointers on rushing the quarterback. Don't go anywhere. The 84 Lumber Mike Tomlin Show will be right back. Welcome back to the 84 Lumber Mike Tomlin Show. Are you 84 Lumber material? Visit 84lumber.com slash careers to learn more. Cincinnati has lost five consecutive games at Heinz Field, while the Steelers have not lost back-to-back -back home games in three years. Coach Tomlin knows the key to keeping both of those streaks alive is to get pressure on quarterback Joe Burrow. For more on Burrow and the Bengals, let's set it back over to Bob and Coach. Guys. All right, Missy, thanks. It's the first time of seeing an AFC North team come to Heinz Field at Cincinnati, a team that's rebuilding, but certainly showing flashes that they may arrive earlier than some people thought. Uh, coaches talk about Joe Burrow because he got injured last year. He took a lot of hits, and so far this season, he's taken a lot of hits as well. His development, what you have to do to kind of stop him in his tracks, because he was very good in week one, not so much last week. You know, he's a really talented player. Uh, he needs no endorsement from me. He's got the hardware to prove it. First pick in the draft, Heisman Trophy, and, and really prior to his injury in 2020 was, was being what they expected him to be. Um, he's a quality player, man. He can make all the throws. He's got the arm talent, he's got the intellect. Um, his mobility is above average. Obviously, uh, coming back from injury, that's changed some of the things that they do in terms of highlighting his mobility in the short term. But his mobility is, is something to be contended with as well uh, under normal circumstances. He's just really got a very complete skill set. You couple that um, with a nice set of eligibles. Some, some somewhat new, some have been there. Tyler Boyd has been the mainstay for those guys for a number of years, particularly in the slot. He's one of the best in the business. T. Higgins is a big guy who makes big guy type plays. Chase is a guy that played college ball with Joe Burrow, who's a rookie this year and has already provided big time splash for them, getting behind people on a weekly basis. And so, man, he's got a nice group to throw to. You couple that with Joe Mixon, who I think is the second leading rusher in the NFL right now, um, they're going to be something to deal with. It doesn't escape us that uh, their new offensive line coach, Frank Pollock, uh, was their former offensive line coach uh, in 2018. In 2018, I think Joe Mixon led the league in rushing. And so um, he's back. And so we're, we're weighing that as well. We realize a lot of ball is going to go through Joe Mixon, um, but we still have to contend with with Joe Burrow and those eligible. So it's a challenging task, no doubt. It's always uh, difficult, I think, at first to develop a relationship between quarterback and wide receiver, yet you mentioned Chase. He and Burrow uh, had a great relationship in college. In the preseason, it looked like there were some miscommunications, but, boy, they've fired up ever since the start, uh, start of the season. Yeah, and I don't even know if, if, if Joe was throwing to him in the preseason. So, you know, um, the preseason is the preseason. Um, you know, I got, I got a couple tapes in the can from regular season with him getting behind people. 
Um, <laughs> we better be ready to keep a lid on it, particularly after last week, man. We gave up a big, a big play on a third down in the second half of that Raider game uh, that was really significant. Yeah, that third and ten, they're certainly capable with the speed they have. Let's talk about one of the things they did last week was put their defense in small, uh, you know, short field situations by turning the ball over four times. How important is that element in this game? Their defense kind of responded and kept them in the game. Man, they've got a really good defense. Um, that, that group has probably been put together a little bit longer than the offense. And so they got quality players. A guy like Jesse Bates, who's one of the best in the business, back there in the center of the center of the field, keeping it all together for him. Can't say enough about him. Been really impressed with his overall play, particularly his hitting and tackling. Um, that tackle in the run game caused fumble in, in overtime, man, won the game for him in week one. Uh, he and Von Bell are a formidable tandem back there. Um, both veteran players and know what they're doing. Can't say enough about the collection of men uh, that they've assembled up front. Um, and, and some old, some relatively new, uh, but their interior bigs uh, are something to be dealt with. They got big time depth there. Um, new acquisitions, guys like B.J. Hill, number 92, uh, former NC Stater, uh, provides really quality depth, man. It's gonna be a full day's work dealing with the depth and the talent within their defensive front. Trey Hendricks, uh, Hendrickson is a guy that they picked up in free agency um, that provides the edge heat from New Orleans. I think he had 13 sacks a year ago in New Orleans. Um, you know, he and Sam Hubbard, man, are, are a formidable tandem on the edge, and they run very deep and talented on the interior. Well, certainly it's going to be one of those games. Quarterbacks are going to be featured. Ben Roethlisberger got hit a lot last week, but Joe Burrow's been hit 25 times in the first two games. I'm sure Zach Taylor and company want to reduce that. When we come back, Mike Tomlin will give you his keys to the game this week against Cincinnati. Heinz Field, 1 o'clock. Right now, it's back to Missy. All right, thanks, Bob. Both TJ Watt and Alex Highsmith have been on the injury report this week, so Melvin Ingram looks to possibly see an increase in reps. Up next, I had a chance to go one-on-one -on -one with King Mel. I feel like he can be very dangerous and very, very effective, but who knows? We can't predict the future. I know we all going to grind. We all going to work and, and, and go out there and play to the best of our ability and let the results take care of themselves. Welcome back to the 84 Lumber Mike Tomlin Show. Melvin Ingram's sack of Derek Carr was his first as a Steeler and the 50th of his career. According to Next Gen Stats, he had six pressures on 56 pass rushes, and I had a chance to sit down with King Mel this week. A one back look, a play action pick, Carr. Flush, no, he doesn't get out of the pocket. Melvin Ingram the third said, I'm here to greet you, and greet him he did with a sack. Uh, King Mel, as we know you like to be called, um, when you were first brought to Pittsburgh, your first media availability, you said you felt like a kid in a candy store. Do yeah. you still feel that way? Of course. Why? Because it's football. What, what, what better thing would you want to be doing? And what better place but Pittsburgh? So it's, it's amazing. Have you got accustomed to being in Pittsburgh yet, or does it still kind of feel like a whirlwind? You know, you came in, training camp started, and here we are into the regular season. Yeah, no, I've got accustomed to it. I, I, I wouldn't say I've got accustomed to the city because I don't really go places, but as far as the facility and football and the fans, I've definitely got accustomed to it. What do you like about it? Everything. It's an amazing place. The atmosphere is second to none. The, the, the organization is second to none. It's just a great place. I went down the rabbit hole on YouTube of Hard Knocks when they were following around the Chargers. Okay. And the one thing that really came up was your leadership. With Melvin Egram, with Pouncey, with the guys that we have on this team, right? if you take the energy that you have and the respect and the field credit that you have within this team mm -hmm. and just lead them the right way, mm -hmm. hold them accountable in everything that they do, mm -hmm. in everything that we do, mm -hmm. we got a chance to, yes, to win For it sure. all. For sure. Because we got the talent. Yeah, I got you. You feel me? I promise I got you. Uh, do you feel like you're displaying that here? Or are you still getting accustomed to just being part of the team? No, I, I, my leadership, I kind of display it by my work ethic, what I do on the field. I'm not. I don't try to be super vocal because I feel like anybody can do that. You can pick somebody off the streets to be vocal, but it takes a special leader to do it by work at the, going out there, leading by example. And that's what I try to do. Uh, and, and it's not something that I say, well, listen, I'm going to try to go out there and work hard so I can be a leader. No, I just do what I do and let, and if it falls into that place, then it happens. Are you feeling like because you are a veteran that maybe some of the younger guys are following you? 
Sometimes, sometimes, definitely. They definitely gonna look at you. I know when I was a young guy, I looked at every older player just to try to steal something from them that they did on a daily basis or, or how they went about their work. So that's why I try to go about mine the right way. Hey, I killed them with a spin one time too. He said, boy, that spin was nasty. TJ raved about your spin move. Uh, we had a chance to see, I think, a little bit of it, you know, here and there. Why is it so effective and how do you explain it? Uh, to be honest, I really don't know. I just, it's just me out there playing. You know what's so crazy is growing up as a young player is one person that had an impact on my spin move, Dwight Freeman. Okay. And he was a guy that came and I got, to, I was blessed with the opportunity to play with him and just watched him do the spin move I watch people know it's coming and still couldn't stop it. And it's, it's always was like, dang, how does that work? And I, I still can't tell you how mine works. I have no clue. <laughs> Do you feel like guys know it's coming? It's all obviously yeah, people all over say your it tape, every game. but people say it, it works. All the time. They say it all the time on the field. Is it just a feel yes. of when to? Yes, it's definitely a feel and it just happens. Just in terms of health, if you're healthy, TJ Watt's healthy, Alex Highsmith is healthy, this three-headed monster was kind of termed week one. How effective can that be and how dangerous can that be for opposing teams? I feel like it can be very dangerous and very, very effective, but who knows, we can't predict the future. I know we all gonna grind, we all gonna work and, and, and go out there and play to the best of our ability and let the results take care of themselves. TJ said he watched a lot of your film to kind of learn from you and also just because you played with his brother. Uh, what does he pick your brain about? Everything. I feel like we kind of pick each other's brain about everything. It's, it's, it's always good when you got a player of that caliber that you can talk to and, and just and just learn stuff from. And it was just yesterday I was asking him about a move, just something that he does. And, it, and it's like, it's always, it's always a blessing really to have somebody in the same room as you that you can always just, just pick each other's brain about. We don't know what the status will be out of TJ or Alex Highsmith. Um, is this just a normal week, work week for you, or do you feel like you have to kind of take the younger guys along in case if they'll be called upon? No, nah, that's a normal work week. And I feel like we do got young guys here, but they're here for a reason. And, and Coach Tomlin's always, always preach a next man up mentality. So they're here for a reason, and everybody's here for a reason. We don't know the outcome of nobody. This couple of us might not wake up no more, but we do know whoever's out there on Sunday gonna get the job done. On the 23. He's being chased. He flips it off. It's intercepted. It's picked off on the play by Melvin Ingram. Last year when you played against the Bengals with the Chargers, you intercepted Joe Burrow. Do you remember that? Yeah. Take me through it. Uh, it was actually kind of like a screen play. A screen play and he was rolling out kind of to his left and I came and he threw it. And, and I caught it, but it was, I think it was like his first pick. And, but it was, it was a cool moment. Joe, Joe is definitely a, a phenomenal young player in this league. What are you seeing from him in this offense? You know, Coach Tomlin said it's multi-pronged and can be very dangerous. Yes, it's definitely multi-pronged. You see a lot of stuff. You see him throwing a deep ball. You see him hitting comeback routes. And you see them running the ball. So they, they definitely got a balanced offense and you got to cancel it out face by face. Carr steps up and Carr gets tossed out. Melvin Ingram has his first sack as a Steeler. You picked up sack number one with the Steelers, 50th of your career. Uh, does that mean anything? No. Nah. More to come? Working. Still working. Definitely still working. All right, perfect. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. And you can watch my full interview with Ingram right now on the Steelers official YouTube page or by scanning the QR code below. All right, Steelers and Bengals both sitting at one and one coming off of week two losses and looking to rebound. Bob Pompeyan is with Coach Tomlin to get his keys to the game presented by your neighborhood Ford store. Guys. All right, Coach, let's take a look at this team, Cincinnati, and some of the things you have to do to be successful on Sunday. You know, we, we got to be good up front, offense and defense. Our bigs have got to do a good job in the physicality element of play. Um, our young bigs up front on offense has got to deal with the myriad of things, uh, the uh, fronts and things that they're capable of providing. And obviously, running a little short on defense uh, due to injury, we got some new guys uh, that'll be ascending or playing larger roles. Louder Milk. Played, his, played in his first NFL game last week. That'll continue. Isaiah Bugs will have an opportunity to play more than he's played. So from in terms of an elevational role on the defensive side of the ball, a continued maturation on the offensive side of the ball, uh, the play of the, of the bigs is going to be significant. 
Well, let's talk also about your offensive line as protection for Ben. Conversely, you know, Joe Burrow's been under attack as well. Your defense likes to go after uh, quarterbacks if they can. Uh, so far, they've shown Cincinnati that they have an issue with that. Uh, do you focus that as an area you need to get to in this game? You know, I just think that that's, you know, we're always trying to get after the quarterback regardless of circumstance, to be honest with you. Uh, that's just our mantra here in Pittsburgh, as we call it, Blitzburg. Um, and, and so regardless of what's going on with an opponent, the nameless great faces that we play, those are always our intentions to get after the quarterback and to work our tails off to protect ours. You know, our quarterback has been at this thing for 18 years. And so, you know, we understand uh, what that means. Um, we're going to work our tails off to keep him clean. We realize how important that is to keep him upright. Um, and on the other side, man, um, you know, that's just a desired style of play for us. Also, when it comes to snap breakdowns in terms of, you know, running the ball versus passing the ball, I'm sure you'd like to run it a little bit more effectively. Um, how important is it to get to that early in the game and try to avoid a slow start in one of these? You know, the key is what you said, to, to avoid a slow start. And so whatever that entails, um, you know, I'm not going to put any handcuffs on the offense or staff in terms of moving it. If we're possessing the ball and moving the sticks and, and scoring points, um, then, then I care less about the manner in which it's being done. We're a football team, I think, that scored seven points in the first half of play thus far this year. And, and so we got to rectify that, and we can't put any constraints on ourselves in an effort to do so. All right, so it's going to be the Cincinnati Bengals coming to Heinz Field 1 o'clock on Sunday. We have that for you on KDK, followed by post game. Join us for that. It's a big game. Uh, Coach, all the best to you in the kitchen, which is going to get hot on Sunday at Heinz. AFC North football, excited about it. Thank you. All right, that's Mike Tomlin. And that does it for another Mike Tomlin show here on KDKA. Be sure to join us next week, same time, same station, as we get set for another big game as the Steelers take to the road. For Missy Matthews and head coach Mike Tomlin, I'm Bob Pompiani. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you tomorrow on KDKA. What's up, Steeler Nation? It's Terrell Edmonds. Welcome to the Pittsburgh Steelers official YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe to our channel to stay up to date on everything going on in the Steel City. Thanks for being the best fans in football, and here we go.